Right. So here's one specific example of uh, the, the lab results we got when we looked at the relationship between both kinetic energy and velocity. And we found that when we grafted originally, uh, we got a top opening parabolic relationship. In order to linearize that, we had to square the x variable. So we graph kinetic energy versus velocity squared with units of meters squared divided by seconds squared uh, to get a straight line. And so they got the equation, kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.0926 uh, joules divided by meters squared over seconds squared, that's the slope, all times velocity squared. Okay. And their, their mass that they used in the experiment for the car was 0.1925 kilograms. So let's just see how we, uh, and remind ourselves, like, how do we come up with a general equation for this to find out the kinetic energy of any object regardless of like this specific experiment? So uh, just really quick, um, some of you guys found that all these units simplify to just kilograms, and I want to show you how that happens real quick. Okay? You've got a joule divided by a meter squared over a second squared. A joule is a newton times a meter. So we've got still divided by meters squared over seconds squared, and a newton is a kilogram times a meter divided by seconds squared, so you have a newton times a meter, all divided by a meter squared over seconds squared. If I combine these two things together, we get a kilogram times a meter squared over seconds squared, all divided by meters squared over seconds squared. Okay, a lot of crazy units, but check this out. These all cancel, and the only unit left over is kilograms. So this crazy combination of units are just kilograms. So we said that this number must be in mass. So if I replace this with kg, that means that's got to be some mass that stayed constant in our entire experiment. Well, this group ended up having a mass for their car of 0.1925 kilograms. And it looks like that the slope it must be a mass because, like we said, all of those units simplify to just kilograms, but it's not the mass of the car, but it might be related to the mass of the car. In class, we decided that the slope was approximately one half of the mass of the car. And let's look at a few different whiteboards from class to, just to show that that's consistent among all of our whiteboards, or most of our whiteboards. Let's look at another group's data. Their equation is written in red, and you can see the slope is 0.2728 kilograms, and their mass was 0.4759 kilograms. So about a half of a kilogram, and the slope was about a half of that, or 0.25 kilograms. So the slope is one half the mass. With another group, we can see that the mass of their car was, again, about a half a kilogram, and their slope was 0.25 kilograms. And so again, their slope is about one half of their mass. So now that we see that most of our whiteboards, or the majority of our whiteboards, show that the slope is exactly one half of the mass of the object, uh, we can now take this equation, and instead of having a mass value, let's just write in one half of the mass, or one half m. So now our general equation becomes, we're calculating kinetic energy of any object is just this, that the kinetic energy of any object is equal to one half the mass times velocity squared. So it's one half times the mass times velocity squared.